Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to edit black and white photos. We're going to be using the latest version of GIMP which at the time of this tutorial is GIMP 2.10.8. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So you'll see here I have various photos set up all in black and white. And these are all photos that I took with my camera. And we're going to go through some of these today. We're not going to get through all of them. I'm just going to show you a couple examples as to how to edit your black and white photos. Each photo is going to have a slightly different technique. I think every time you edit a photo, it's pretty much going to turn out different every time. But the goal is to create a sort of process so that you can have more confidence while you're editing your photos and know what to look for. So in the case of black and white photos, what you want to look for is a photo with tonal detail or a wide range of black and white pixels or dark and bright pixels. Similarly, you also want images with a lot of contrast. So you want elements that are sticking out from one another. In this case, you've got the dog, which is up front and center. It has a lot of contrast between the variations in the light hitting her fur and then the background obviously is contrasted against the dog herself. And then in this case with this photo of a bridge you've got a lot of contrast between the shade and the light. You do want to keep an eye on overall composition when you're taking these photos in black and white uh, or when you know you're going to go into a post later and edit these photos in black and white. Although you can use the crop tool to reframe the composition. So sometimes it is more so about light and contrast. And the composition part can come later or be perfected in your photo editor such as GIMP. So the last thing I typically look for when I'm either taking a photo or when I'm searching for a photo to use as a black and white photo is texture. So if you come over here back to the bridge photo, you'll notice there's a lot of textures going on here, whether that is the concrete road here or the texture created by the light. So wherever it's dark, it kind of creates a varying texture from the areas that are light. And then you've got the texture of the sidewalk here. We've got some old weathered wood instead of some concrete. So that just provides a little bit more texture. And then you've got the steel here. So the steel beams on this bridge create textures as well in the metal and in the bolts holding it all together. So those are pretty much the main elements I look for when taking or finding a photo that I'm going to use for black and white. So tonal detail, contrast, composition, and textures. All right, so all that being said, one last thing before I open up my first image. I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, and under here, under Image Import and Export, I'm just going to check under Import Policies, Promote Imported Images to Floating Point Precision. What that's going to do is convert all of my imported images to 32-bit linear floating point. And what that does is it basically provides more data so it can provide a wider range of that tonal detail. So we can have a wider range of the black and white or the gray pixels going on. And I only recommend checking this if you know your computer can handle it. If you have a slower or older computer, your computer might not be able to handle the 32-bit floating point images, so you can just keep this unchecked. But I'll keep it checked on my computer and click OK. So I'm going to open up my first image. So I'll come over to my file and I'm going to right click on the image I want to open up here and go to Open With and choose GIMP. All right, so now we have this open in GIMP. One thing to note is that this is a pretty large image and also this did come in as 32-bit floating point or 32-bit linear floating point. So I do want to scale this down a little bit to start. So I'm just going to go to Image, Scale Image, and this is optional. If you have a powerful computer, you don't have to do this or if you want to keep your original file size. But I'm just going to scale this down to 1920 by 1280. And I'm also going to change the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. And then I'm just going to set the interpolation to no halo and click Scale. All right, so that scaled our image down and that is just making this image a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to use this zoom to zoom in a little bit or I'll just hold control and uh, use my mouse wheel and zoom in on my subject. So now I have to convert this to black and white. There are a couple of methods. You can go to image, mode, and then grayscale and that'll convert it to a grayscale or black and white image. Or the way I recommend is by going to colors, desaturate, desaturate. And this is just the method that I prefer. I'm going to set my mode to luminance and we're going to do that for every photo that we're going to edit today. And I'll click OK. 
And by the way, I'll be editing three photos total today, so this being the first, of course. But now what I wanna do is add some contrast to this image. There are a few ways to do this in GIMP. I'm gonna start by going with the easiest one, the most obvious one, so I'll go to Colors, Brightness Contrast. And I'm not gonna mess with the brightness because I think this image is bright enough as is, but I'm going to turn up my contrast just a tiny bit, and I'll click OK. And then another way to do this, which will give you a little bit more control, is to go to Colors, Curves, and I'm gonna click in the middle of my curve, that's gonna create a midpoint, and then I'm just going to click on the left side of my curve, and that is going to drag down the shadows, so you'll see that makes the darker pixels even darker here. And then I'll come up here to the right side of my curve, this is going to adjust the highlights in my image, so this is going to make the bright pixels even brighter. And by making our bright pixels bright and our dark pixels darker, that's going to create some more contrast here. So there you'll see there's a little bit more contrast, and I'll click OK. And finally, another method you could use is you can go to Colors, Levels, and you can adjust the levels here. The far left side is going to be your shadows. This middle triangle is going to be your midtones, so I'll just turn those up a bit. And then this slider over here is the highlights. So you can see when I drag this to the left, it's going to actually brighten up my image a little bit more there. So there's a before, there's an after. And I'll click OK. So something to note is that in a lot of the other photo editing programs, people recommend editing the colors of your image. In GIMP, that's not gonna really work because the colors are just gonna get overlaid on top of the black and white. So for example, if I go to colors, color balance, and I add red to this, you'll see that will actually add red on top of the image. It's not going to affect the red pixels below the desaturated image. So basically, you know, this isn't performing on the original pixels and then being rendered as a black and white photo. It's just adding those colors onto your black and white photo. And that's not what we want to do. So I'll hit cancel. But if you do want to edit those red, green, and blue channels in order to further adjust your black and white image, you could do so by going to colors, desaturate, mono mixer, and here you have the red, green, and blue channels, and now we can adjust these channels separately, and as we do that, you'll see it will affect our final black and white image. So there's a before, there's an after. And this adjustment is more effective when there's a lot of sky going on in the image. Right now there isn't any sky here, so it's not really making a big difference. And in fact, I don't really like this more or less than before we even use this. But I'll click OK to apply that anyway. But now I'm going to come over and create a new layer. And I'm just going to name this Soft Light. And I'm going to change the layer mode to Soft Light as well. And fill this with transparency and click OK. And what I'm using with this layer is I'm using the soft light mode to make the subject's eyes stand out a little bit better. So I'll grab my paintbrush tool here. I'm gonna set my color to white. And I'm gonna increase the size of my brush so it's a pretty large brush here. I don't want it to be too large. And then I'm also gonna turn the hardness way down. And this is going to create a very soft and very large brush. And so when I paint that on my soft light layer, you'll see that that enhances our eyes of our subject instantly. And then I'm just going to decrease the size of this because the eye on the right side is a little bit smaller, so the subject's left eye. And you can also use this to enhance other areas if you want, like the nose or something. I'm gonna hit Control Z, I actually don't wanna do that. But here's a before and here's an after, so the eyes stand out a little bit more. And now what I'll do is I'll create a new layer and I'll change this to Vignette. And I'm gonna change the layer mode back to normal, so all of the images we're editing today will have vignettes. I'll click OK. So making sure I'm clicked on that vignette layer, I'm gonna to go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Vignette. And here we have our vignette filter. This is a Gaggle filter so we can live preview it while we edit it. And I'm gonna come down here to Proportion. That's going to change the proportion of my vignette right now. It's the same proportion as the image or the same aspect ratio. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. And then I'm going to change the center by clicking on this mouse here and then clicking where I want the center of my vignette to be, so right around the eye here. I'm doing this because I want the vignette to bring people's attention to the eyes. And then I'm just going to expand the radius out a bit because I don't want so much of the vignette on the image. You'll see if I bring this down, we get too much black going on here. So I'm just going to expand the radius so this comes off the image a bit more. I can also adjust the softness of this. If we have too much black encroaching on our main subject, we can turn the softness down a bit and that'll bring out some of the black or it'll take the black out I should say. So there's a before and there's an after. You can see that does a good job of framing our subject and I'll click OK. 
And the last thing I'll do here is I'll just sharpen this up. So I'll click on that main image layer and go to filters, enhance, sharpen, unsharp mask. And I'll keep the radius to three and the amount to five. If yours looks a little bit weird, you can always adjust these values until you get the value you like. And I'll click OK, and there's our first image. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the second image, which was this image of the bridge. So I'm gonna come back over here to my file, and I'm going to find my image and click on it. And this time I'm just gonna drag it over here to this little Wilbur icon. This is just another way to open up your image. This photo was taken on a different camera, so GIMP is asking me if I want to convert this to the native sRGB color space. So I'll just hit convert on that. And now we have our bridge photo open here. The first thing I'll do again is scale this down because this is a really large image. And so I'll go to image, scale image, and again I'll just scale this to 1920. And I'm going to change the resolution to 300. This isn't that important by the way, you can just keep this to 72 if you want and click scale. All right, now our image is scaled down, so I'll hold control and zoom in a bit. This time I'm going to rotate and crop my image, so I'm gonna come over here and grab my rotate tool. I'm gonna to make sure the interpolation is set to no halo again, and I'm gonna set the clipping to crop to result. And then I'm just gonna click on this, and I'm going to move it up a tiny bit because I think it's a little bit crooked here. So I'll go to about right there and click rotate. And now you'll see there is some transparency going along the border here, and the layer size has shrunk down as well. So I'm just gonna zoom back out a little bit. All I need to do to fix this is go to image, crop to content, and that'll crop out all of that excess we had there. And now what I'll do is grab my crop tool. I'm gonna uncheck my size or my fixed aspect ratio I had here originally. And I'm just going to click and draw the elements that I want to uh, keep in here, or I'm gonna crop in the elements I wanna keep here. So I'm just gonna crop out some of the left side of the screen here and some of the top, nothing major. So I'm just gonna click to crop. Once I've done that, I can now convert this to black and white. So I'll go to colors, desaturate, desaturate, and set the mode to luminance and click okay. All right, so we have a lot of contrast here, but we do need to enhance it a little bit. But first what I wanna do is recover some of the details in the shadows. So there's a lot of cool textures going on within the steel, but you can't see it right now because it's too dark after converting it to black and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Colors, Shadows, Highlights, and I'm gonna turn the shadows up a little bit. And I'm gonna turn it up until I see the amount of detail I wanna see in the steel. So you'll see I'm turning this up quite a bit. I don't wanna do too much, like if I go all the way to 100, you'll see it looks really artificial over here. So I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit. And I can also turn up my highlights and that's going to help bring in some of this light so the light will spill in a little bit more. And here's a before, here's an after. So a lot more detail going on in the steel here. We're gonna bring out some more of it as we make more adjustments. And I'm also going to adjust the white point. That'll also bring in a little bit more white pixels which will brighten up the image overall. So there's a before and there's an after. And actually let me turn the shadows down a bit. All right, so now I'm gonna click OK. The next thing I'll do is I'll increase the exposure of this. So I'll go to Colors, Exposure, and you can play around with the exposure. This is based on stops, so I'm just gonna turn this up by half a stop. And let me try a full stop here. So here's before, here's after. You can see there is a balance between completely blowing out the sky and the details in the sky and bringing in details of the steel when I use this method because exposure is gonna brighten up the whole image, not just the shadows or the highlights. So a little bit less control here, but what I'm gonna do is just turn this back down to 0.5 and click OK. Now I'm gonna add some contrast by going to Colors, Curves, and again, I'm gonna create a midpoint here and I'm going to just play around here and see how this looks. So this time when I drag the shadows up a little bit, it brings up the details in here without really adding too much noise in my opinion. And then if I drag the highlights down, it recovers some of the sky here. So here's a before, here's an after. And if I go the other way, so if I turn the shadows down a bit, I do lose some detail. Uh, and then if I turn the highlights up again, I also lose some detail but it does create more of a dramatic effect here. So I think this edit ultimately is up to your personal preference. I'm just going to keep this with the shadows turned up a bit and the highlights turned down a bit before and after and click okay. 
And then let me adjust the levels to this. So I'll go to colors, levels, and let me just play around with this and see if I can get a look that I like. So let's get some of the midtones turned up. Test the highlights here. So this brought some of that dramatic look back into this while also being able to turn some of the midtones up there a little bit. So I'll click OK. All right, so now compared to the original photo, you'll see there's a lot more detail going on in the steel beams here. You can see more of those textures. But now what I wanna do is enhance the light right here, the light source. And I also want to add a vignette to this and sharpen it up. So I'm gonna create a new layer and we're gonna name this soft light again and also change the mode to soft light and click OK. And once again, we will grab our paintbrush tool here. I'm gonna adjust the size of my brush so it's a fairly large brush size. And I'm just gonna click with this set to white right here on the light source. So you'll see that has enhanced our light source right there. And now I'm gonna create a new layer again and name this vignette and click OK. And then once again, I'll go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. And so this time the default settings aren't too bad. I am gonna play with the radius here, see if I could bring this in a bit. And also let me change the mode here to normal. So this is the layer mode set to normal here. So let me play around with the radius. I'm gonna keep this proportionate to the aspect ratio of the image. And then you could also play around with the gamma to again, determine how much of that black from the gradient creeps into the center of your photo. And softness kind of does the same thing as well. It's a very similar adjustment there. So there's a before, there's an after. You can see this is framed a lot better now with this vignette and I'll click okay. And lastly, I'm just gonna add some sharpening to this image. So I'm gonna click on the main image layer, go to filters, enhance, sharpen, unsharp mask. And I'll keep all the settings here the same and click okay. And there's our second image. All right, so I'm gonna do one last image and this is going to be the image of the two gentlemen on the train platform. So I'm gonna open up my file window here and I'm gonna come over to the original image and I'm gonna open it up with GIMP. So I wanted to use this image because it shows you how much you can play around with your image when you do capture your photo in a very large JPEG format or even a RAW format. So because this is such a large photo right now, instead of just scaling this down immediately, what I can do is I can grab my crop tool and I can sort of zoom in on my image and just look around and see if there's any composition in here that's worth uh, cropping this image to. And one thing I noticed is that there's this guy wearing like a hat and he's got a funny mustache and then there's a security guard that he's talking to. I just thought that was kind of interesting and you can't really see that unless you zoom in on that. So then what I did was I just came over here to my crop tool and I'm gonna click this to a fixed aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080 just for this photo. And now what I'll do is I'll draw my crop and you'll see that this is now allowing me to reframe my photo. So instead of having all this stuff going on out here, we've just zoomed this into what's happening right here. And then another thing you could do is if you want this to be a specific size, you can come over here to the size and change this. So for example, if I wanted this to be 1920, I can type that in there and that'll shrink the crop size down. And then I can just change where this crop is uh, residing or where it's sitting on the image there. And I can double click to crop that. So now if I zoom in, this is still an HD photo, but it is zoomed in a lot. So, uh, you know, there's not as much detail going on with the subject and everything there. I'm gonna hit Control Z because I actually don't like that composition too much. But this time I'm going to draw my crop again and only keep the elements I wanna keep. So let's go with about right there. And then once you're ready, just click to crop and then hold control and zoom in a little bit. So here's our new composition. Now I'm going to convert this to black and white. So I'll go to colors, desaturate, desaturate, and I'll click okay. So this is a pretty dark photo once it's converted to black and white. So what I can do is go to colors, shadows, highlights, and I'm just going to work on recovering what's going on in the shadows. And I'm not gonna turn this up too much. There's other adjustments we can make to this to recover those details and brighten our subject up a bit. But I can turn this up a decent amount here. So I'm at around 50 right now. And that's looking pretty good. I can also increase or decrease my highlights depending on what I wanna do here. I'm gonna increase them a bit. And then of course you can shift your white point here. And that's going to change the clipping point there for your white pixels. So I'll preview, here's a before, here's an after. So we've recovered a decent amount in the shadows and I'll just click okay.
Next, I'm gonna come over to colors, exposure. And once again, I'm just going to increase my exposure a little bit. So in this case, once again, I'm gonna increase it just by 0.5 and hit enter. And because this is a Gaggle filter, I can preview what this will look like before I apply it. So there's a before, there's an after, and I'll click okay. All right, so this photo is looking a lot brighter now. The last thing I wanna do is just brighten up my subjects right here. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'll name the soft light once again and keep the mode set to soft light. And I'll grab my paintbrush tool again and increase the size of this. And then once again, I'm just going to click on my subjects and you'll see now here's a before, here's an after that just brings your attention. It draws the eye to that spot where these subjects are standing. But right now there's not really a clear guideline telling you to look at our subjects here. So what we can do is we can create a new layer and name this vignette and change the mode to normal again and click OK. This time we're not gonna use the vignette tool, we're going to use just the gradient tool. I'm gonna to switch my color over to black and I'm going to set my shape now to linear. And what I'll do is I'll just draw a line from the right side of my image heading towards my subjects. This is going the wrong way right now though, so I'm just gonna come over here and click to switch my gradient. So now it's coming over from the right side of the image. And then I can click on this midpoint here and just adjust the fade of my black. And you'll see that as I do that, it is causing the right side of my photo to fade out a little bit. And I can always adjust where this endpoint sits if I want, and then further adjust my midpoint here. And so by having this fade out over here, it does draw your eye more to the left part of the image. So I'll hit enter to apply that gradient. And I'm actually gonna change this to vignette right because we're going to create another new layer and we're gonna name this vignette left. Click OK. And we'll do the same thing, except this time we'll do it on the left side. And I'm gonna hold control to stay in straight line mode while I draw this gradient. And this time I'm going to stop this gradient right about here. And maybe cause the endpoint to come a little bit off of the canvas here. And so now you can see that these vignettes are helping to draw the eye right here to our subjects. I'll hit enter. So now I'm gonna come back over to my main image and I'm gonna use that mono mixer. So I'll go to colors, desaturate, mono mixer. And now I can adjust the uh, various channels here in the image. And this is just allowing me to further enhance the black and white pixels going on in the image. So it's basically making them either brighter or darker. That's really the only two options when it comes to black and white photos. So there's a before and there's an after and I'll click OK. And the last thing I'll do here is enhance this. So I'll go to filters, enhance, and choose sharpen. So we're just sharpening this image up a bit. And again, I'm just going with the default settings here and I'll click OK, and there's our final image. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy, and you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.